Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 34.5. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Statistics Chapter 3, Third File, click on the link below the video. So there's three files for Chapter 3. Hey, in this video here, uh, this is our last topic for Chapter 3. We have some autos here and prices, and we need to calculate the mean median mode and standard deviation but look at this this column of numbers usually we just calculate average standard deviation mean median with functions and highlight the whole column but wait a second we need to isolate so we need to do it just for Ford and then just for Toyota Honda well there's a built-in function for mean average if now in this class we've done lots of count ifs right some ifs, so we know we can count with criteria. Well, when we're calculating an average, that's adding them all up, divide them by the count. So there's an average if. But when you get to standard deviation, there's no such thing as a standard deviation if. No problem. We can do something called an array formula. We're just going to put the if function inside the standard deviation function. All right, now the first thing is. Um, and not only that, but then we're going to do z-score, too. And we're going to do something pretty tricky. We're going to have to do a two-way lookup to calculate a column of z-scores, right? Because when we do average or median or standard deviation, we're calculating what's called an aggregate number. So we take all the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4 for 4, and do some calculation. But when we do z-score, a z-score is a calculation on a particular value. So we're going to have to do something pretty tricky to get a, a z-score if. Now the first thing is I want to take this column and extract a unique list. In our statistics class, we call that a list of elements. So I'm going to highlight the whole column, including the label at the top. I'm going to go to Data, Advanced Filter. I'm going to say Copy to another location, the list range A1 to A15. That's correct. Criteria range, we don't need it because we're going to use that as our criteria, unique records only. And then Copy to, I'm going to say right right there and then click OK. All right now I'm going to type mean tab I'm going to type standard deviation without a space let's say DV I don't even know how to spell standard deviation I hope that's it I'm going to add a space and then hit F7 to spell check no I guess I didn't get a right deviation all right, so I've spell checked it with F7 in uh, edit mode. Now I'm going to backspace. Now I'm going to tab, mode, median. Now I'm going to click in one cell and control asterisk on the number pad to highlight the whole thing here. Highlight all these cells, and since I'm going to put a calculation there, I'm going to put the color green. I always like to differentiate the cells with actual formulas and the cells with raw data. I'm going to change the column width there. All right, now, for, I'm going to actually make these really small just for the video, all right? So uh, we have a function for mean if, average if. The range, that's going to be with the criteria. I'm going to highlight that in F4 to lock it, comma, the criteria right here. Comma and the average range, that's with the actual numbers to do the mean calculation. I'm going to hit F4 to lock it. Close parentheses, control enter, and then copy it down. Oh, look, so, oh, me, Ford has uh, got a higher average cost than these ones for this particular sample here. All right, now standard deviation. We can do stdev dot s. This is a sample. That's an s uh, 2010 function, of course. The 2007 function is that one. And normally we just highlight the whole column, but as we mentioned earlier, oh, that would calculate all the standard deviation for all the numbers, and that is not what we want. For Ford, we only want one, two, three, and four. So watch this. You just instead of over here we saw average if, well, there's no standard deviation dot s dot if, right? So we have to put the if function right here, right inside. Now as soon as you do this, 
uh, we're going to see that it's a special type of formula called an array formula. But let's go ahead and build our logical test. You usually put a single logical test here that has one true or false, but we want to ask the question of the entire column. So I highlight F4. Unlike the average if and count if, we don't do comma and then criteria. Here we have to actually build it equal sign, the equal sign actually touching the cell references, and then click right there. So what this does, and I'm going to highlight this and hit the F9 key. The F9 key is evaluate. You can see it gives us a bunch of trues and falses. So the trues exactly uh, match up with the position in this list. So now I'm going to control Z to undo that. We just did that to see the trues and falses, to see that that particular construction delivers lots of trues and falses. Now that's the logical test. So every time we have a true, we want actually the number. So I'm going to type a comma and the value of true, the whole column. You see how the simil this is similar to the average if function we just did, but the construction is different if equals whatever the criteria, and then the value of true the entire range. Now you have to hit F4. Now we don't need the value if false right there. Close parentheses on the if. You could see the green. And then close parentheses on the standard deviation dot s. Now this is an array formula. And the reason it's an array formula is that's expected a single logical test that has one true or one false. But it, now we gave it a bunch. So you have to tell Excel that this is an array formula. And the way you do that is you hold Control and Shift keys down. So I'm holding down. And then you hit Enter. Now up here in the, cur the um, formula bar, you could see those little curly brackets. That means Excel understood that you were putting in an array formula. You cannot type those in. Now I'm going to drag this down. Wow, look at the standard deviation for the Honda. Must be some gigantic Honda. OK, so the Honda, there's a 16,000. Wow. So we could clearly see the standard deviation. The variation in the data points for Honda is much greater. We could see that this mean less fairly represents its mean than the other two. Though it looks like the Ford, the mean for the Ford more fairly represents its data points because the standard deviation is lower. All right, now I'm going to do mode equals mode dot single. In 2010 function, it's mode.single, which means we just want a single mode. I bet you there aren't any here. If, highlight the whole column with the criteria, F4, use your equal sign. I'm going to say there's the criteria, comma, and then the value of true, all of these values. I doubt very much there is a mode. All right, now I close parentheses. Close parentheses. It'll just give us not available if there's not a mode. Now, Control Shift Enter. I see my little curly brackets, and I'm going to drag it down. We can see that if we did have a mode, that means two prices, two prices are the same. It would deliver it. But no, no problem. We want that. We want it to say, hey, there is no mode. All right, median. If so, the construction is criteria F4 equals the criteria, the actual single bit of criteria, comma, the value if true is all of the values, F4. Close parentheses, we don't need the false. Close parentheses on the median, Control Shift Enter, and drag it down. All right, so now I want to also show you a pivot table. The pivot table will not do this or this, though. It can only do mean and standard deviation. And if you want them all, um, and you're doing formulas anyway to get this. Might as well do them all formulas like that. But I'm going to click in one cell, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. Instead of insert pivot table, pivot table, I'm going to click in one cell and Alt NVT. I'm going to click existing sheet. I'm going to click right here. Click OK. Now I simply car type down to the rows. Sales once, sales twice. I'm going to close this field list. Right click, summarize values as average. Notice absolutely beautiful. Now I'm going to uh, click here and type mean. A little bit easier than the um, formulas. All right, and then here, right click, that, uh, let's see, show 
summarize values as it doesn't show you the uh, standard deviation here but I'm gonna click more options or you can go down to value field settings and we want pop the not the population one not the P one but the sample one click OK I'm just gonna put SD or little s that's our symbol and statistic for standard deviation so you can see we get the same calculations all right, now I'm going to expand this column here. We're going to do something pretty tricky here. We're interested in mean and standard deviation when we're calculating Z. So I'm going to put Z score, highlight here. I'm going to click that button and then click there. That copies the formatting. Now, normally what we do is we do this equals for Z score. We want to know how many standard deviations above or below the mean is this particular value. So I say particular value minus and then you'd have to take the mean for Ford so you've subtracted it right here's the actual mean 24 we can see that this particular value is above the mean so we'll get a positive z-score but to standardize it, you divide by the standard deviation. Now notice what we're doing here. We'd have to create all these different formulas one by one because we, had, we don't know as we copy the formula down how to get the mean for Ford and the standard deviation for Ford. That's the calculation. Now that's formatting, so I'm going to come up here and general or control shift tilde or grave accent. It's the key to the left of the number one. Now we're going to have to do something to change this. Now, I'll just look at this F2 right here. It is looking at the Ford mean, and this G2 is looking at the Ford standard deviation. So if there's a way to put something right there that could look something up, because notice as we copy the formula down, it's our formula could be looking at Ford, Toyota, Honda. That could be the signal to go over to this table and get for Ford, if it says Ford here, it'll know to get the mean and the standard deviation. Well, that's easy enough to do. We can use the VLOOKUP function. Now, I'm just going to delete this, and we'll just see if we can use the VLOOKUP function, get a formula, copy down, and look up the right mean depending on what's, what's in the column, the first column. Equals VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is a lookup function. The lookup value where we're going to say, hey, VLOOKUP, look up whatever's is two cells to my left, Ford, comma. The table, that just contains our lookup values here and the values to return either here or here. So I'm going to highlight this whole table. VLOOKUP, oh, let's immediately hit F4 because we need to, to lock that. VLOOKUP always looks for a match in the first column and then return something from either the second or third column. The table is right there, comma, column. You have to tell it which column has the number to return to the cell. This is the mean in the second column, so I'm going to type 2. You can see that green box right there, column 1, 2, 3. When we do standard deviation in just a moment, we'll change that to 3, comma, and then you either have an approximate match or exact. We have words. We're looking up exactly for Toyota. You would use approximate match for tax tables, which we don't have here, so we want false or zero. That just means it'll find only Ford. Close parentheses, control enter, or, or whatever's in this column over here. So now when I double click and send this down, sure enough, Look, it's looking at Toyota. The VLOOKUP knows to go, broop, finds it in the first column. It jumps over to the second column and slaps it in the cell. All right, what if we change this to a 3? Now we can clearly see when it finds Honda in the first column, it's finding the Honda standard deviation. Now we can use this. I'm going to copy it. We're going to have to use that thing two times in our formula. I'm going to copy, delete. Remember, the formula is particular value minus a mean divided by the standard deviation. That's the simple formula. Now, right there I need to, actually right here is going to be our standard deviation, so I'm going to double click it to highlight it and control V. That is supplanting that cell reference. Now it's uh, able to look up the right standard deviation depending on what's in the first column. I'm going to double click that, 
control V and I'm going to change that to a 2. Now this part of the VLOOKUP is looking up the right mean. Control enter, double click and send it down. And I'm going to go test it. Equals particular value minus, and let's see, by hand I would say Toyota, this is what the, the form is doing. Go over to the second column, get that, bring it back down there. Close parentheses, divide by, and now look up Toyota, go over here, find the Toyota. One, one two, third column, click. Okay, so I've seen how VLOOKUP actually is working in this formula, and I've verified that it actually looks correct. All right, uh, standard deviation, or no, uh, mean if, standard deviation if, mode if, median if, and the Z if with two VLOOKUPs. All right, see you next video.